Hello folks, I'm back with another one, finally. I hope you're well, I hope you and your family are doing good, as I always say. Um, and I hope in the time since my last video, um, you've managed to make some uh, magical summer memories uh, with the people that mean the most to you. Um, because although I'm looking really, really rough, um, and, and a lot fatter than my last video, um, I'm, I've managed to have a, a decent summer in terms of making memories with with my family. Um, this video is sort of a, I would say a little bit of a follow on from my last video, which was the consequences of gambling addiction. Um, how even though you may find that you can stop gambling it's important to remember that the decisions made whilst you're in the midst of gambling addiction can live with you for a long, long time after. Um, it doesn't mean to say you will have a, you know, a really unhappy recovery. It's just being mindful that if you are in the midst of a gambling addiction at the moment, the actions that you're taking now, particularly around your credit rating and such can live with you long after you you do manage to to stop gambling um and it can hinder you you know it can hinder you going forward in in life in terms of a mortgage and as i spoke about in the previous video and other financial aspects um but there's nothing stopping you once you have stopped gambling if you are struggling with it having an absolute fantastic life after you've you've found a you know a, a way to stop um just financially it can impact you um you know and and i'm certainly feeling that right now um on this video i i don't want it to be all negative like the last one um so i'm going to just speak about a few sort of updates really what's been going off in, in in sort of my life in particular around gambling um and also like i said just touch on yet another thing that has cropped up from really stems back from my gambling days which has today led to some news that yeah it's not very not very good not very proud of so in the last video I spoke about how we're finding it difficult to to move house and we're stuck between you know really you know a really bad place to live um in terms of the the danger element of it. That's still the same. We can't we cannot get out. No one and I don't say this in a you know, feel sorry for me way, because it's far from it, it's just the reality no one will give us a chance um not my local authorities not my uh you know connections within estate agents and certainly not landlords um and the mortgage is just off the table altogether um so we are still there since the last video um we have lost you know, we found out we was expecting a baby. Um, and unfortunately, a week later we found out that the baby won't make it. Um, which is the second one in which we have lost this year. Um, the first one was seven weeks. We were seven weeks pregnant. Um, so that's obviously tough. And it, you know, I'm not... I'm trying not to make this a really negative and down video. I'm just also sort of highlighting that events can happen in your life when you have stopped gambling, when you are in recovery. And it it, it is sort of, it can be for, the, for, for a person who is perhaps feeling not at their strongest, it can be a testing time as to whether... You know, you fall back into your previous escape 
Um, it's a gambling, really. Um, for me, personally, I've not, genuinely, I've not wanted to go back. I've not planned out any ways to go back gambling, uh, to escape to gambling. And I've certainly um, still got barriers in place, such as GamStop, that would make that difficult anyway. Um, it's been a tough time in, in what I've spoke about, you know, with losing uh, two pregnancies, you know, not just for me, but for my wife. Um, it's it's something that has its own, but it hasn't at the same time, you know, um, at different times and different days it catches you out. But what I do know is returning back to gambling to escape from any uncomfortable feelings is only going to make things a lot, lot worse. Um, so I've been feeling strong in that sense, um, in the sense that I won't return to gambling um, as an escape from these events in life that, that happen that, you know, really can test us are really sad events. Um, and I think it's important that really that to put across that it do, when things happen, it's not just when you are, you know, when you have got an addiction to gambling or any addiction for that matter. I think personally, it's about finding a different way to cope, finding a different way to sit with the feelings that you are feeling, the emotions, and not just jump straight at gambling straight at drink straight straight at drugs or gaming or whatever escape that you have but learning to sort of deal with your emotions in a different way and whatever way that is for you whether that's some help that you might go and get to learn or maybe that's a hobby that you pick up that's beneficial but for me gambling would just make things a hundred and ten you know i've I've no appetite to go back gambling and I certainly haven't got any plans to go back gambling and I certainly have the knowledge that previous experience tells me it would be a real bad mistake to go back as an escape from gambling and also a temporary plaster over something that's um, much more deeper than that. So yeah, that's, that's one of the messages I wanted to come out of this video that... In recovery, you will still uh, face events in life that are, you know, enough to knock you, enough to bring you down, enough to potentially lead you to a dark place mentally. But it's important we don't just go back to that escape that we always have, because that is only going to make things a lot worse. Um, I'm living experience of that. Many of us have probably done this, felt this you may be able to relate um, and I think like I said it's important we find other ways to manage our uh, emotions other than returning back to the to, to the thing that caused a lot of problems away from that <clears throat> on a slightly up until today a slightly better um, sort of part of it that part of what's been going off since I've updated. I did indeed land a job with a charity um, and that was to do, set up a working alongside um, someone else to set up a, a gambling service which would go into uh, colleges, schools, deal with, you know, children between 11 and 25 um in the local area to to highlight the dangers of what gambling can do to create awareness but also to find what might make them feel easier about being able to talk if they are struggling about with gambling um also sort of understand what might drive them to gamble whether it's you know ultimate team the fifa packs where it starts whether it's just a little gamble amongst friends or whether it's that like with me you know certainly i did this um 
having a mad interest in football and, and begging family members to put a bet on for me. Um, but yeah, it's sort of a research type thing as well. Um, and that was going really well. I was going in and doing speeches, uh, talks about my story really to, to young children, well, young adults, children, um, up at, all the way up to 25 uh, from 11. And it, it really gave a sense of you sort of at least trying to make a difference so we can minimise, hopefully, how many me that turns out to be in the future. Because um, I don't want anyone to go through what I have. I'm worse, you know, people have, have gone, you know, they've they've not come out of this, unfortunately. So I've been trying to offer my story in the hope that it would educate the next generation of people who are turning, you know, a, a keen eye to gambling and at least give them the, the awareness of the dangers of what can happen. Not everyone will experience difficulties with gambling, but I think there's that much thrown out there about gambling's fun, gambling's a way to socialise, gambling's this and that but not enough about the dangers and that's what I was doing by telling my story. Um, the other half to that was more admin based, working in the office and it's that part today that I have been actually released from. Um, I did struggle with that, um, working in an office. In terms of with things that's gone off recently, my mental health hasn't been fantastic. I've been really unstable, um, down to, like I said, what's gone off recently and also where we live. Um, I'm not sleeping very well, things like that. I feel worry about the danger and it has impacted on my performance on that side of it in the office doing the admin. And to be honest, I, I've been, you know, I have been given support from the employer, but it's got to the point where they felt, and and to be honest, I sort of do agree that I shouldn't do the admin stuff, I shouldn't go in the office and do that sort of stuff at this moment, um, and instead I will just concentrate on going and doing the talks with them, uh, going into schools and colleges and wherever else and doing the talks because that's also where I feel I've brought most value to the to the to the charity and to the people we are intera interacting with and so that's what I'm going to be doing I've been released from one half of the job to just do the other part which is doing talks and I think that's where like I said I do bring I feel I bring a little bit more value than you know, the office side of it at this moment while my mental health is how it is. So that's a bit of the sad news that I touched on at the start that we found out, well, I found out today. Um, but again, that comes back down to the decisions I made while I was gambling. Um, as I touched on in the last video, it does come down these mental health issues I've got now. You know, the guilt and the the worry about the danger about where we live, things like that. It's all as a direct result of what I did when I was gambling. Had I not, you know, ripped companies off and took loans that I couldn't pay back and got us into all sorts of financial difficulty, um, you know, not paid landlords and things, we wouldn't live where we live now. We would live in a you know, what I hope would be a lot safer area, a lot safer house, um, with a lot safer neighbours perhaps, and, you know, I wouldn't feel the guilt that I feel now, um, and therefore it wouldn't impact me as much as it is now, and I would be able to sleep at night, which is one thing. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's the sort of things that's, again, the decisions made whilst we're gambling, whilst we're in the midst of this addiction um, that can impact you in your recovery um, and that's certainly the case with me 
um, and right now. Um, but we can't dwell on it. I can't dwell on it. I need to move forward. I need to get more help with my mental health, which I'm actively doing now. Um, I need to focus on what I am comfortable with, what I do feel I bring value with, um, which hopefully is these videos as well. Um, you know, certainly the messages that I've received suggest that. Um, you may have a different opinion, let me know. Um, and also going into me colleges and things and doing doing talks sort of on a ad hoc basis really um, for the charity so that's what I'm currently up to that's what's been going off so it is a little bit of an update video but with a few key messages in there um, to recap you know the consequences of gambling can live on uh, gambling addiction can live on um, even though you do manage to stop in the sense that it can ruin your financial future it's important that if you are struggling with gambling you do speak out now um in my opinion reach out reach out to me reach out to um your local uh even you know such as a, a charity that might be in your area reach out to gamcare who will do an excellent uh service over the phone you can have counseling really you know really quite quickly with them um, and maybe look at GA website, Gamblers Anonymous. It's important that we all help each other, you know, not judge people. If your family member's affected by it, you know, I know how difficult it, it, it's going to be for you, but let's help them. Let's help them get better and hopefully not ruin their futures financially like I have and and bring all the mess that I did, you know. Um, the other message, to, again, to recap is when things happen in recovery, you know, testing times in life, it is important, as I'm finding now, not to go and jump back into your addiction as a form of escape. We need to learn to manage our emotions differently to what we always have. Um, because ultimately, if you're watching a channel like this, I, you know, you're probably you're either struggling or you know someone who is struggling. Um, and I think we all know that if it gets to that stage, going back to our addiction isn't the answer. You know, it really isn't. It's going to make things a lot worse. Um, so, yeah, just as an update video really but also to touch on a few key parts that I've certainly found as I've been going on um, as for videos coming out in the future I've spoken before about this I aim to do videos I still to this day aim to do videos twice a week things get in the way life gets in the way mental health gets in the way as you can probably see, I'm not looking too great now. You know, things aren't fantastic all the time. It doesn't mean I'm not happy. You know, I have precious, precious, precious moments with my wife and daughter. Happy, happy times, really happy times, genuinely. Memories that will last forever. And I'm happy in that moment and I'm present and recovery is good in that sense it's just also alongside it there is difficulties with my mental health with the you know the guilt of the past as i've just explained and the consequences that we are living as a result of my gambling addiction but you can go on to have some fantastic memories in your life if you are in recovery you know you can be present which is a key thing Instead of on your phone, on your laptop, whatever, gambling away, you can be present in the room. I still have all that and I enjoy all that. And they're really good times with friends, my wife, my daughter. And we can have a fantastic time, really. But it's also, as I've said, and I'm trying to put across strongly, your consequences are still there if you don't do something about them, either early on in your recovery by sorting your debts and I know it's blunt but not burying your head in the sand like I did um, 
but also hopefully if you are struggling with gambling try and catch it and do something about it earlier um, recently I saw a gentleman that had I would say got to the stages that took me 15 to 20 years to get to how bad I was with gambling and this gentleman was recommended to play a slot one day by a friend at work and I think he deposited a really small amount um, and in seven months it took him to a real bad place and I would say it was as bad in seven months as it took me 15 to 20 years to get to that stage and that just shows us what gambling can do what it can do with all the offers the way in which the gambling industry work where they target you um, I would like to mention this actually because I have been using it quite a lot um, when I'm talking to students as youngsters we're taught if if a stranger offers you sweets and asks you to get in the car don't do it I think when gambling companies are offering free bets deposit matches things like this I'd like people to look at it in that light they're offering you an incentive they're offering you sweets to get into their car their their website to, to, to their bookmakers they're trying to lure you in that car journey might go okay you might get a to b and be fine quite a lot of people will but once you're in that car that car can go anywhere and it's important that you don't never come out of that car the same like me where real bad things happen in that car real things that not just affect you but your family your wife your husband your kids and really you know damage you sorry guys and um unfortunately i got in that car i was blinded by the lights the sounds the noises the penny dropping, you know, the the luring in by the free bet offers, the deposit matches. I fell for it time and time again, got in the car time and time again. They're grooming you. They're wanting you to take the bait and join them. And then who knows where you will go from there. But people like myself doing our best to try and highlight the fact that although the car may go from A to B you might have an okay ride with these companies you might also end up not coming out of the car you might end up coming out of the car but never be the same again and unfortunately for me that happened um, it is a danger I would just like people to be aware of the dangers and if you are struggling see my videos other videos that I've done about what you can help you know do to help yourself stop um, there's a few really good channels on YouTube similar to mine that's promoting well I would that's wrong word but offering awareness um, and help on how to to get through gambling addiction only Phil I've mentioned that channel before that's a really good one really in depth at times and I think that you know it's really great content that he puts out only Phil there's a few others that you know really I believe can benefit you if you are struggling or a family member friend someone you care about is struggling with gambling I'm sorry it's gone a little bit somber at the end, a little bit, you know, it, it, yeah, I'll leave it there folks, you know, I'll leave it there, but thank you for tuning in, 
Let me know what you think about what I've said. If there's anything you disagree with, by all means comment. Um, if you want a discussion about anything, my details are in the description below to contact me. Um, I will try and get more videos out. We'll see how that goes. The channel isn't something, as I keep saying in the past videos, that you know I've just forgotten about and don't care about. Um, I'll just do my best to get videos out that add value, that may help someone, just one person, not end up like me, or worse. Thank you folks, hope you're well, take care, I'll see you on the next one.